Hi, I'm Adam McIntosh, and I'm here today on behalf of Music Over Miles to give you an overview and a tutorial of the guitar anatomy. So that you'll know from neck to the full body of the guitar, what everything's called, where it's at, and be able to identify it easily. Hey everyone, let's talk about guitar anatomy for a second. Familiarize yourself with the guitar and know all of the parts that I'm talking about, other people are talking about, someone at a repair shop or another guitar player so that you're in the know. Yeah. Guitar anatomy. Anatomy is a good word to use because we use some anatomical terms from the human body to name the guitar. The body. It's right here. And the neck. The neck, obviously. Nice long neck. So with the body of the guitar and the neck of the guitar, these metal dividers themselves are the frets on a guitar. But when you're learning to play an instrument, the guitar, the note in between those two metal pieces is referred to as the fret. That's kind of confusing. But these metal pieces, if you ever need to take them out of your guitar and get it refretted, they will take them all out and put in new ones and sand them down and all of that. In terms of playing, the space in between them is the third fret or the fourth fret or the fifth fret. This is the fret board where the frets go. And this is known as a pick guard. This is the headstock from here up. These are the tuners. Each one of them is known as a tuning peg. Right? The tuners that tune them are all interconnected. But this is a tuning peg where the string goes into. And hoping that you can see all of this, this is on this guitar, it happens to be a volume knob. So if you were to play a note, you would be able to turn it down from here without walking over to your amplifier on stage and doing so, and turn it back up. Really valuable, the volume knob. If you are too loud, which most guitar players really never know, you can turn down. You don't want to do that as a guitar player, but it's an interesting space. 10 on the guitar turned all the way up makes you sound like that. Going down to 7 makes you sound like that. Two different sounds right here. This is a switch. This switch switches between what pickups, these pickups right here, the pickups are activated. So for example, on this guitar, in this configuration, this position all the way down with this switch may be activating just this pickup by itself. In the middle, both pickups, and all the way up, just the one pickup. This pickup is picking up the sound that is being made in front of it. So there are a lot of coils and wires in here, and what they essentially do is they pick up the signal of the sound vibration that the string is making, and they the wiring here goes out to the cable and goes into the amp, which is then amplified by tubes or whatever. And it amplifies the sound of this note. What I move down to here, this pickup picks up that I'm not playing this note anymore, I'm playing this note. And so that's how the notes on the guitar or the electric guitar are amplified with the pickups. 
So this pickup in, in front is referred to as the neck pickup. And if someone's asking you, is it the bridge or the neck pickup? This is the neck pickup. This pickup is closer to the bridge. This is the bridge. You can see the strings are going over it. So you can easily remember that it is a bridge. Now on this guitar, it happens to have something called a, some people will call this a whammy bar. I find that a kind of a ridiculous term. This is a, a tremolo bar. That's what I like to call it. And what it does is, you've heard this before probably, it keeps trembling. This one happens to be a certain brand. Sometimes what people will just refer to this thing as the name of the brand. Right? And that works with chords and single notes, which is really fun. So we've got a bridge. We've got the tremolo bar and mechanism. We have a volume knob. We have a switch that activates our pickups, turns them on and off. We have neck, we have a body, we have a pick guard. We have the cutaway. The cutaway in the neck or in the body, you can see is there is not one up here because we're not playing guitar this way, we're playing guitar this way. And that allows you to play all of the notes above the 12th fret more easily. Most acoustics don't have a cutaway. They have equal sides on the top and it kind of stops you from playing lead way above the 12th fret because that's just not a thing that you do a lot on an acoustic guitar unless you are quite the guitar player and, and then you just buy an acoustic with a cutaway. So the cutaway is here and on a Stratocaster and yeah, Stratocaster, other guitars of this body form, they'll have a cutaway like that. Some of them don't need it. Les Paul doesn't have typically a cutaway. There is a Les Paul cutaway, but most of them are rounded down on both sides and there's enough space to get up well above the 12th fret. This little plastic piece right here is known as the nut. And it's really good to think of that as the end of the guitar. And I like to imagine that this end of the guitar is like an invisible finger because right? it's doing the same thing that your finger would be doing when it's playing notes on the first fret or barring a chord. It's doing that for you and that's why you can play open notes. So it's the zero fret, some people will say, but this nut allows you to have that imaginary finger there that is your bar for chords down on the first and second fret. It's doing this for you. Okay. So tuning pegs, tuners, neck, frets, fretboard, body. Ah. Uh, I guess it's important to mention the strap and where the straps are secured to the body here and at the tailpiece. The tailpiece is the back of the guitar or the bottom of the guitar rather under the bridge or the tremolo bar. And last but not least, in fact, the most important is the jack. And that is where you plug in an electric guitar. So I'm going to do something right now that you should never do. And that's unplug your guitar cable from the guitar while the amp is turned on. Uh, didn't make a great big loud pop, but if you listen to me trying to put it back in, it's rather unpleasant. So, if you're on stage or you're playing through a loud amplifier anywhere, when you pull this jack, this quarter inch jack plug out, it will make a loud pop. Putting it back in is terrible, especially if you don't know where the jack is. You'll be doing this for a long time, and it just is really annoying to audiences and really anybody listening, hopefully yourself. So, what's the solution? Always, if you need to, say walk off stage and leave your amp on, rather than if you can't turn it off, right? just go over to the amp itself and pull the jack the plug out of the jack there. 
and then you have no pop. Then it's safe to pull this plug out because it's not connected to anything anymore. You don't have to pull the plug that's going into the jack in the amp all the way out. You can just pull it out of engagement. And you just pull it back a little bit, leave it hanging there. <clears throat> and then you don't get that loud pop. If that's going through a PA system, if your amp is mic'd on stage, it can really hurt people's ears, actually. So it's a good habit to get into to not pull the plug out of the jack in the guitar. All right. Beyond that, the anatomy of the guitar, anything else on here uh, other than, I guess, obviously the strings, these are the strings, one, two, three, four, five, six, um, is going to be something that a specialist or a repair person will, or a teacher maybe, will inform you about. So those are the most important aspects of the anatomy of the guitar that you'll need to know to communicate with other players, communicate with your guitar repair person, and, and be familiar with what other people are saying to you when they're talking about guitars. <clears throat>